Hey, 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 it's Undead Chronic, back again with another response video. This time, we have some oopsie daisies. We have some concerned feminists. Feminists are freaking out about what is happening in Israel. They're concerned. They're worried. So I got a couple selection of feminists who are losing their collective minds about what the images and videos coming out of Israel are seeing. If you haven't been paying attention, Hamas has launched a multi-pronged attack. I wouldn't say attack. Operation. Terrorist attack. They know they're not going to capture any land. They're just there to capture citizens, uh, get news headlines, press headlines, yeet people in a rave, you know, capture Israeli soldiers, capture American citizens, Mexican citizens, British citizens, capture as many people as possible because, I don't know, I guess it's that time on the Terry clock, time to get relevant. They got sick of Ukraine getting all the press and now they want more NGO funding and so they got to get in the news and boohoo, whine and cry about, you know, my babies, my children, my whatever. There's been a couple particular videos of women getting captured. There was one, I think it was an IDF soldier, a female, who was being led into a truck. It looked like she pooped herself. Um, and everybody's like, oh my, the woman, the woman, the woman. There's another video showing a German Jewish tourist, I think dual citizen, uh, Jewish lady that lived in Germany is visiting Israel again. And she got captured from a rave, a little dance festival for peace. And, uh, yeah, she prob she's probably dead. Uh, she was in an unnatural position, practically naked in the back of a truck. And they were, you know, parading around with her body in the back. She could have been knocked out, but I don't know. I, I would put money on that she is no longer with us in her mortal coil. Those are the two huge things. The, the, the ones that get all the attention on Twitter right now. Oh my God. <laughs> the women got hurt during war. I've seen videos of male IDF soldiers getting yeeted in the head after they're dead. Stapped on, spat on. Um, being given gender transition surgery when they're dead. I, I've seen much worse done to men. But because two women, one who is still alive, supposedly, have been inconvenienced by Hamas, the entire Twitter sphere is up in arms. The trad cucks and the leftoids, like every, it's funny. There's all this Ma Israel, Ma Hamas, Ma Palestine, Ma Zionism. These two political factions are typically aligned with the right and left. Unless you ask Democratic senators, in which they will mostly all be supporting Israel. But if you just divide it up by the red pill sphere, like manosphere lens, on why are people concerned? Both the pro-Palestinian and the pro-Israeli people are pissed off <laughs> that women are affected. They don't care about all the men that got shot. They don't care about the men who died, the men who burnt to death, the men who got exploded, the men who had rubble fall on the back of their head while they were trying to take care of the kids. They don't care. The commies, the wokesters, the trad cucks, the, the spineless conservatives like Mike Cernovich, they're all upset that women are being abused. That's the only thing they care about. Women hurt, now I care. That's all they think. They're all on the side of females. Well, here's, here's something I want to say. If you are a 30-year-old, single mother, feminist, and you ever decide to go to a rave to celebrate peace in the Middle East, might I be so misogynistic to say that's not a good idea? But it's Israel. It's it's Israel. It's safe. It's, Israel ain't safe. Maybe Tel Aviv. Maybe the middle of Tel Aviv. But you're, you're going to be near the border of Gaza, going to a dance festival, uh, dressed in rave thought gear. It, no, no, no. That's just a poor decision. But, but, women do not submit to men. Women do not listen to men who are concerned about their safety. And they live in a fantasy land. I can't get attacked at a dance party for peace. 
so then 30-year-old Jewish German Satanists with children, unmarried, will go to a dance festival and presume that they are safe. Look, it's okay. Look, feminist women love to presume that they're safe, and most of the times they are safe. When they live in a country that still has somewhat of a masculine control of law and order. Like the 80s, you know, women aren't going to go into downtown and, you know, they're not going to expect to get assaulted because the manly influence that built the country and the laws, the culture, is still somewhat powerful. But today, you go to New York City, you walk around in a bikini. Yeah, it's not going to go well because our government, our laws, our systems, power and order is all fallen to feminists. Feminism. Feminists vote with their feelings. And when you vote with your feelings and you enact power through your feelings, you do things like bail reform, you let the criminals out. But we have this feminist right here, Moonlit Misfit. Oh, she's a quirky goth girl. Jaw's too large for me. Don't worry, I don't have a crush on her. And she says, quote, decolonialization is never, is meant to be violent, unquote. So she supports that, right? She supports decolonialization, decolonization. Decolonization is meant to be violent. That's something that she said before. She wants to decolonize Palestine, and it's okay if it's violent. She wants to decolonize the United States of America, but that's okay if it's violent. She wants to decolonize every single place white people live. I don't, I don't know how you decolonize a white ancestral home, but I guess it means putting more brown people there. Whatever. But it should be violent. Okay, okay. You could be an extremist commie. But then she says, decolonization is meant to be violent, does not, and will never include sexual violence and humiliation against women. Wait a second. So it's okay if men die. It's okay if men get humiliated. It's okay if sexual violence happens to men. But if it happens to women, you disagree. Okay. This is what happens when the cops aren't in control. This is what happens when your feminist cops, your feminist laws aren't in control. Open warfare. This is what happens when the arena of violence is opened to everybody. What happens? Women get assaulted. Women get raped. Women get yeeted. Same thing happens to men. I don't like it. I don't think it should happen. But if there's not a strong man around to stop it from happening, it's going to happen. So that tweet got 3.5 million views because it was just like, oh, the commies are okay with men dying. But as soon as a woman gets abused, then it's a problem. (laughs) 3.5 million views. She should have verified her Twitter. She would have gotten a couple thousand dollars off this tweet. And she uh, muted reply, so only people she follows or mentions can reply. Let's, let's see her account. Let's see what she's all about. Let's see here. Moonlit Misfit. Anarcha. She's an, an she's a, a narco communist by the way. Explain to me how an anarchist can be upset about anarchy. Because what happened near Gaza and Israel in the past 24 hours... That was anarchy. That was anarchy. You don't like it. Oh, well, we should have had a commune. Anarcho-feminist bicon. Uh, I don't even know what that's supposed to mean. She says, God dethroner. Let's look. Let's see what the God dethroner looks like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're going to dethrone God. Yeah, sure. You're upset about grape and violence, but you're going to dethrone God. This is hilarious. All these women... They use words like magic spells. Shout out to TFM. She describes herself as a bloodline ender. Okay. I end bloodlines. And you're proud about that. It's in your Twitter bio. But for some reason, bloodlines getting ended offends you. You're upset. Why are you so mad? Why are you so mad? Someone says extraordinary. Yeah, zero HP Lovecraft. Yeah, I follow him. Extraordinary. She says violence against women and girls are a part of imperialism. <laughs> In imperial white countries, 
<laughs> they have the lowest in historically imperial white countries. Actually, I'll say it. In imperial authoritarian white countries, they have the lowest rate of sexual violence against women. I bet my left nut on it. In tribalistic African cultures, there's a whole lot of grape. In democratic European cultures, there's a whole lot of grape. In pseudo-republic American governments, there's a whole lot of grape. Probably not a lot of grape going on. In mustache man's country, just saying. Probably not a whole lot of grape going on in Rome. When Marcus Aurelius was running the show. <laughs> Look, here we go. <laughs> Dr. No Step says, no, you can't overthrow society that way. It's not fair. These women, women like Nina, commies, they have this fantasy of overthrowing systems built by men. And once we step forward to an anarcho-communist feminine future, everything's going to be safe and dandy. No, it's not. There will always be men who will dominate, conquer, and yes, that includes grape. But if you disenfranchise the men who are around to protect you, you don't have protection. You may, may more likely get graped. Uh, look at the fall of any empire. It's like grape-topia, concord grapes, grape jelly, grape mead, grape wine, everywhere. So the idea that a 30-year-old that woman can dress like a floozy and fly to the Middle East and dance and not get abused doesn't make sense to rational people, men. Makes sense to her because she's thinking the Instagram pics. It, that's like the micro thing. The macro thing are commies like this thinking if they get a, rid of enough white men, everything's going to be peaceful. No, it's going to be Grapetopia 3003. If you want to support the show, if you want to support the war band, consider donating to Cash App slash Cash Sign Underchronic. That's Cash App slash Cash Sign Underchronic. 